Howdy peeps and welcome to the next part of the SU-76 Vitamia group build group build? build series, sorry, group builds on the mind at the moment I think this is part 6 uh, <laughs> I'm kind of losing track now but let's see where we got to last time shall we well where we got to was Oh, while I remember, I must remember, extra light. Oh, where's the blood gone? Let's see, this, oh dear, somewhere around there. Uh, there we go. Uh, as was mentioned previously, it was, the video was a bit dark, so I've got an extra light, which if I can find the actual plug socket, we will get plugged in. There we go. And it's actually mounted to the camera. There we go. A little extra light. So, where do we get to? We had the main hole built. And we started to paint the interior parts. So, as you can see, as you can see, I forgot to do the second coat on the little seat. I've painted the gun switches and stuff and magazine racks on that side but as this and the metal plate on the floor which might pick up but we'll pop that out of the way for now as these are easier to see what I'm working on now I have come to the decision mainly through laziness that I'm going to do some basic weathering on these parts, uh, the interior, without doing a gloss coat. Now, that could be a bit scary to some, but I'm going to do it a relatively easy way. If it goes wrong, you can always just repaint it again, it's not a problem. And I'm going to be using Citadel shades and washes. In particular, the Null Oil, which is probably not readable because the label is so filthy now. For the metal parts, Athonian camo shade for the green parts, and a brown wash that's probably about 20 years old. It's it's just a brown acrylic wash for the fabricy and wooden parts. This one does need a good shake up, as these settle quite badly if you're not careful. You could probably use inks as well for this technique. I say technique is just putting it on and letting it do its thing really. Carry on shaking, carry on shaking. I'm not doing anything disturbing, just off camera I promise. There we go. So that's pretty well shook up. And we'll pop the lid. See why Citadel change from these style pots, I don't know. Well I do know, it's because they make more money with those style pots because they dry out, they tip over a lot easier and they're generally more awkward to use so grab yeah I'll go with the, that brush and because I say it's a wash it's very thin it will pick up very quickly on the brush and we literally just run it all over the area we want Tilt it back a bit so I can see the bottom. And I think we can zoom you in a little bit for this as well. As long as I remember where I am. There we go. The trick is to not let it pull up too much. If you start getting pulls, just drag them out. Right, you're looking for an all over coat, not necessarily uniform. Uh, some, some different uh, shades or whatever are preferable because it will give it a different patina or timbre or whatever the technical term is. So we'll just pop that on there. 
and continue on to the next section. And this is pretty much the way I do figures as well. It's just generally washes and dry brushing. Ooh, I've got to angle it so I can see what I'm doing without getting my big old mushroom head in the pit in the frame. So again, just covering it, it will automatically wick itself into the detail and the panel lines if you want to call them panel lines. Just run it all over. I know in reality these were probably supposed to be lighter coloured but we can dry brush it again afterwards and soon bring back the original colour while keeping the dark shade in the in the recessed detail. Now it's a bit on the seat. And for some reason it doesn't want to spread out too well, just surface tension, so we just persuade it all over. But again, it doesn't matter too much if it's not perfect as it's a military vehicle. Just get the excess off the brush on me, a bit of paper. Check I am actually doing this in shot. Because I've taken the excess out of my brush now, it's just removing it pretty much. But as you can see, we're getting a different coloration. Trying to avoid brush marks, although this brush has had it. And suck up some of the excess on the brush. That'll do for that. Just go over and neaten those up a little where it's pulled slightly. And we would we'll do exactly the same thing on the butt stock of the gun. Just give the brush a quick clean out and we'll use a smaller brush for the gun because it's a smaller piece. We don't need anywhere near as much wash. So it just adds a bit of depth and character to what we're doing. And again, wash out the brush. So that is that for those, for now anyway. Once it's dry we can go and give it a dry brush if we want with the original camo colour. I'll shake up the nolan oil, although this thing is so empty now I doubt I'll even get anything. Yeah. As you can see, empty pot pretty much. Shows how much I use it. For this, because we're doing on a far smaller piece, i.e. the magazines. I'm going to try and turn it and get it in frame in view. Same thing with the null oil, it's a kind of an oily blacky colour so it works very well on metallic things to so just dull them down a bit, make them look used and grimy. For this we're just giving the impression that it's been uh, made a bit mucky and mired by use. The obvious bonus that it will sink into recesses. Obviously try not to get the two washes mixed together. 
I won't do the light because that's supposed to be fairly bright. Close that again, clean out the brush. And now we're looking at the large green areas for which I will probably use the Ethonian camo shade. If not, I have. Oh, what else do we have? We have the Biltan green. Uh, Draconov nightshade. No, or the. Celia green shade we also have if we're not happy with the colour of the Ethonian camo shade. Now I'm going to need a. Uh, do we go with a flat brush? Let's go with a fairly worn out flat brush. Um, no, we won't. Too big. We just end up with wash everywhere. Probably too much anyway. So uh, yeah, let's just start um, again. Literally just a coat, letting it kind of puddle up a little in any recesses, just to help pick out the detail and cover the whole thing, just to add a different tone. As the name would suggest, some shading for the recesses. The trick is to not let it build up inside any eject pin marks, obviously, as it will quite happily, and to not miss any bits. Or get it where you don't want it. As I say, it will naturally pull around detail, which will pull it, pull the detail out a little. And I'm being a bit brave. Because these washes are relatively quick drying, but getting this close to something I've just washed is probably not a good idea. Making sure we get every every surface. If you miss bits, they will show up. And down that side as well. Again, taking care not to get any on the actual gun or any of the other bits that are different colours. And around the magazine wax. leave the tops for now especially so basically what I'll do is if I'm happy with the look I'll then go and possibly do a little dry brush just to pick out the detail a little more if I feel it needs it in the case of the fabric that probably needs that probably does need a dry brush because that's not looking particularly nice. Maybe even another coat of the brown. So we'll do that. Just to even things up a little. Uh, maybe we can get away with some water. It hasn't quite dried yet. So I can reactivate it, move it about a little maybe. So once this stuff dries, it is dry. You won't move it. Just uh, try and drag it around a little, and we want to leave some of the differences in there, but we don't want to leave it looking you know, like it's got brush marks on it. <laughs> if we can help it, let's even it out a little. That side, yeah, that looks okay. So basically we'll leave those to dry and I'll repeat the same green all over this. 
once they're dry and I will then <coughs> have a look and a decision on whether I need to do any highlighting with dry brushing or anything like that which again will either be done in a slightly lighter shade of green or maybe even with silver just so it's kind of chipping certainly on the green bits anyway so I can put those out of the way for now to dry well out of the way so we don't actually end up putting the instructions or anything on them something else I've been up to is the shells which have been primed black which is the UMP gloss black primer and they've had a couple of coats of another Citadel paint, the Skull Crusher Brass now those are all dry, later on I'll paint the uh, warheads, uh, whatever the, the actual head is called of it, the actual bit that goes boom. I'll paint them in the whatever colours the instructions are asking for. So This is me when I'm modelling is, I'll get to this point, I won't then sit and wait for that to dry or go do something else while that dries, I'll get on and do whatever I can on the model. So in this case, assuming you're doing the same as I am, you will have also uh, washed etc. the inside of the rest of the driving compartment, fighting compartment, sorry. I'm waiting for that to dry so we then flick ahead through the instructions and see what we can do. Well if that's still if that's still drying we don't really want to be putting on the uh, trailing arm suspension. We're nearly 20 minutes in so we don't really want to be doing starting the tracks quite yet. These pieces attach to the main hull so we'll leave those. Anything that's attached directly to the main hull we'll leave as we're waiting for it to dry. What we can start on though is the gun. Because that's not attached to anything. Ooh, I'll zoom you out a little bit again. I'm actually getting the hang of remembering which way around the zoom is on this camera now as well. Yay! So. We need the C sprue again. Get the figure sprue out of the way. Is that the C? Yep. 72, 71, and 81. Oh, 71 and 72. And 81, that looks like a breech block to me. And we also want 82 because that goes inside. And D14, which is the gun barrel. So, it's going to probably be. Oh, that sprue there. Because it looks like a gun barrel, I'm guessing. <laughs> and most of the parts on here appear to be for the gun or the radiator so we might clear a sprue fairly shortly which is always a good good stage to get to so then you've got another sprue you don't have to be looking at or hunting through to find the correct one uh, again, we'll just clean these up quickly. I really should break out a new one of these sanders. Ooh, other side. Ooh. I have no idea how many of these videos I'm going to end up with as backlogs on my memory card or a hard drive. Um, I'm not trying to rush the build as it were or the build series but 
I want to get it done. You know, it's um, one of those things. It's to me, it's still a part, part built, unfinished kit sitting on my bench. Right. So, fortunately, no actual sprue gates on the main length of the barrel. So we just clean up the two ends. And then there is obviously a seam line or a mould line down the length of the valve for which I use a thinny sponge. Try and locate it in the light, which is the light coming from straight above is proving quite tricky. There we go. This doesn't take an awful lot because there's not a lot of seam there. That's probably gotten rid of it. Yep. And now on the other side. Just rub the dust off with my finger. And look. There's a little lift up there, and a little back up here. Other than that, we're good. Now this is one part we are going to go through with different grades of sander, just to make sure it's nice and smooth. So I've never seen that side. And because it's so close to one pull with extras. Now if you're really fast you can break out your buffer and polisher just to make it, it all shiny and new again. Feel it get a bit sticky or start to squeak when you get there. And we'll repeat the same process on the other side. And we're just getting out all the extra, any scratches we did put into it. You hear it starting to squeak. Especially when I get to a clean part of the sander. So if your sanders get clogged, literally just wipe them off on your trousers, shorts, whatever. So these two go together. Something like that. And that plugs in the back. Right, so grab our glue back again another one of those tools glue is always within reach and just run a bead all the way around there we go what I probably should have done is glued this first and then sanded the barrel so this could dry while I was sanding the barrel and this part just glues on the back. Uh, here we are probably going to have to take some seam lines out. A little bit much glue, never mind. So once that dries up we will um, Sound out any seams, and we just glue that from the bottom rather than the top, so we don't, so the glue doesn't uh, obliterate any details. So it does look like the breech block is a separate part. 
Now it's saying to be careful which direction we glue the barrel on in. Well, it only goes in one way. It's keyed. So we'll pop that in. Are sure that is straight? Well, that uh, looks straightish to me. Plenty of glue around the inside. Maybe a bit more, just to be sure. And on the nose. And pop it in. And we'll pop that there until it sets, hopefully straight. And we're on to the next page, which requires using said gun, <laughs> which we don't really want to be touching at the moment as it's still wet. But we may well find Yeah, everything else requires that still. Right. And the more small sub-assemblies you have kicking around, the more chances of you losing something are. So I shall stop there, just so I don't end up with... Hang on, all right. Oh, it's all right. Just confusing myself, I've got a box inside a box inside. Yeah. Usual explosion in a model shop factory, or <coughs> looking like an explosion in a model factory in here. So let's have a look at these, have these dried. Yep. And yep. As we can see we've got slightly different tone on the green and it's picked out the shadows and the details quite nicely. Not overly strong, not overly heavily done, but it's there. As I say, a little bit of dry brushing will pick out all the highlights quite nicely. And what I will do is I'm going to leave that as is because that looks quite good to me. Well, good enough. So I'll just, uh, while we're here, we might as well just um, shake up some silver. I oh, know it should probably be steel or something, but hey ho. Just a tiny little drop. This is literally Vallejo silver. And we'll pick out all the various little fasteners as well. Again with a teeny tiny 5-0 brush. Again, brush site, I mean, you might be better off with a cocktail stick. As I sometimes find with a brush this small, especially uh, doing things like this, that sometimes my eyes go out of focus, which is what's happening right now, and I'm losing the depth perception. Well, the paint actually dries on the brush before you get it to the model. But thankfully, we're in uh, mid September now and it's getting a bit chillier, so things aren't drying straight away. Uh, what was it? I was painting something earlier in the summer on one of the silly hot days. I actually have problems with the paint drying in the airbrush. Not not tip dry. <laughs> it was actually drying inside the colour cup. I forget what it was I was painting. Um, again this brush is on its last legs. Got some errant bristles at the sides of point whatever direction they feel like. No, it's not a lot, it's just a tiny little thing to do. 
but it makes the actual fasteners pop out a little bit more, give you a little bit more fidelity on the detail. So, I shall call it there for now because we're at half an hour. And next time we'll continue possibly with the interior, unless I've done it all. Um, I might actually just continue and wash the rest of the interior, which is just leave putting some pigments on the floor to simulate dirt and dust. Then we'll be gluing that together, sanding that down, and continuing with the construction. So, if you're following along, thank you very much. If you like what you're seeing, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumbs down, but please tell me why. If you really like it, subscribe, that would be great. But enjoy your modelling, have fun, rock on, peace out, and bye-bye.